Brothers and sisters, I have decided um, that we are going to put to bed our series on uh, the nature and character of God. It, uh, it seems like that is a very important thing to talk about, and it is, but it also seems like that's maybe not exactly what God thinks our congregation needs anymore at this time. So we are going to put that to rest, and uh, who knows, maybe someday we'll come back to it, or maybe not. Uh, but I would encourage you, if if nothing else, remember that who God is, both in his nature and his character, is absolutely essential and critical for knowing who you are and what you are called to. It is not good enough to just have a vague understanding of God. Because the reality is, is that our, our culture, the broader culture around us, teaches us so many terrible things about who they think God is. Everything from the white-haired, angry, thunder-wielding, judgment-carrying God that you see in all kinds of movies to just some vague, ethereal force of, of good or whatever in the universe. Those are wrong. Both of those things are wrong. You need to know God. We need to know God. Again, I've said it before, but it's, it's like, it would be like trying to have a relationship with a spouse whom you never get to know. Right? Right? You, you, you can't live for 25 or 40 or 50 or 70 years together and, and not get to know your spouse and, and still have a good relationship. I guarantee you, if you have not put any effort into getting to know your spouse after 70 years of marriage, there is something very seriously, twistedly wrong in your relationship. Right? It, in the same way, except even more, we need to get to know God. Because he, he wants us to do that. He wants us to know Him. So, don't give up on knowing who God is. That being said, we are moving on. We're moving on to look at 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And, and this, the beginning of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 um, is, is maybe one of the most encouraging passages in all of Scripture in, in, in a lot of ways. I love this passage. Uh, Gwyneth, can you move the slide ahead for me? Gwyneth, um, or... So, uh, we are looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, Silas, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, um, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. Wonderful. That's like just dear Thessalonians, basically, except nicer. Um, we always, Paul, Silas, and Timothy say, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, this is not COVID. This is just some tickle in my throat. Just so you're not worried, hopefully. Um, we always and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. That sentence is the one that we're going to focus on, but we're going to finish reading this passage before we get back to that. For we know, brothers and sisters, they go on to say, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. 
And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Nicaea. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Nicaea, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it. For they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned God to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is important to know what the Thessalonians were facing. They were facing some pretty significant um, persecution from the people of Thessalonica. Uh, Thessalonica was a city that was uh, uh, very uh, steeped in idol worship, and, and so they did not like these Gentiles, these other former idol worshipers, uh, starting to worship a God who did not, uh, did not have an idol, starting to worship uh, Jesus, starting to worship the God Yahweh. They did not like that at all. And so the Thessalonians were experiencing persecution and tough times. And we don't need to go into too many details to understand that there is some, some little similarity with us. Not that we are being persecuted for our faith, not in general. We live in uh, generally a society that is uh, very free for religion, although it's not perfect. But we live in a society where we can practice our faith uh, freely and well. However, we can say that we are going through tough times today. Um, I want an honest show of hands. How many of you would say so far that 2020 is your favorite year ever? Anybody? Yeah? Willie? <laughs> yeah, Willie. <laughs> Yay! Favorite year ever. Anybody else? Yeah, Darcy? Yeah, okay. You're getting married cheater. All right. Other than the young married, getting married couple, right? Uh, and Willie, God is always good, hey? Yeah. Even in our tough times. And that's what we're really going to talk about, right? <clears throat> so, you know, on paper, for sure, this is not my favorite year either. There are things very much that I long to be able to go back and do. I long to be able to hang out with my friends and play a board game. You know, I, I, we, we're making all these choices, and one of the choices that we felt compelled to make is to not have gatherings generally. But if we do have gatherings, we don't play board games because how do you pass around the dice without, without spreading germs? Or how do you... How do you past the pieces and stuff like this, right? So we're, we haven't played board games with friends uh, for a long time. I, I long to give people hugs or shake people's hands. I, I love to not wear a mask everywhere I go that's indoors and public and, uh, you know, all these things that I long, and I, I'm sure many of you do, long to be able to do, right? Not our favorite year. And then, of course, when you add into that all the political questions of this world and, and explosions in Beirut and struggles in the Middle East, well, that's been going on for a long time. And you look at the turmoil down in the United States and, and uh, not my favorite year. But this is where we get into the similarity between the Thessalonians and us and also a call for us. So if you could move the slide forward there one. Maybe I can do that. Well, look at that. I can do that. Right? We remember before our God and Father your work 
produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And those words are important. And you may be looking at this like I did, and you may think, why does Paul and <coughs> why do why do Paul and Silas and Timothy mention work and labor? Right? Aren't aren't they basically the same thing? Or or is Paul are they talking about like labor pains, like giving birth, saying, yay, good for you. No, of course not, right? What is that? Why is there those, why are there two words there, work and labor, that in our language basically mean the same thing? And then a third word, endurance, which is, you know, it's, it's a different thing. Well, the reality is, is that that second word that is translated as labor in English is one of those words that doesn't fully, totally have a proper um, equal in, in English. Um, it, it, it also means not only labor, but it also means toil and trouble. Right? And, and really, what it is <coughs> in, in Greek is um, your, your toil love or your love toil. Okay? And, and what it's really getting at is how the Thessalonians are struggling and suffering and they are working through that suffering to do loving and wonderful things. In, in, in a way, it is a little bit like the labor that a woman goes through in giving birth to a child. The woman is doing hard, hard work. And it is done in the midst of pain and suffering. And yet it is done out of love. And to do, to produce something so wonderful. To bring forth a new life. And so too, that is what it is like for the Thessalonians. They are being persecuted and hounded. They are experiencing pain at the hands of their fellow Thessalonians. They are suffering in this time of trial. And yet they are laboring through the pain to bring forth the gospel for the people of Thessalonica. And, and so Paul says, and Paul and Silas and Timothy says, that we remember before God, your, our, our God and Father, your work produced by faith. They do all kinds of good and wonderful things by faith. But not only do they do good things by faith, they also struggle through to do some of those things and other things beyond, prompted by love. They love their fellow Thessalonians even though those people are persecuting them and harming them. And because of love, they work through the pain recognizing that the end goal is worth all the toil and all the trouble. And then they can endure. They endure by hope. They endure by hope. Let's say <clears throat> you go to the dentist. You're feeling fine. It's a normal checkup. Feeling great. Okay? And suddenly your dentist goes to you, okay, now I'm going to pull out some teeth. Okay? And I'm not going to use any anesthetic. <laughs> Why? <laughs> right? Uh, it would be needless suffering. And 
I think probably it would be safe to say that not many of us would want to endure that or put up with it. We would want to know why, right? Pre- presumably, normally, we would want to go there because, let's say, we are having pain. We're having terrible pain. We need something to be done with our teeth. And we can endure whatever the dentist does to us because we have hope that it is going to be better afterwards, right? Right? You go, you can endure things when you know that there is hope. Now, the world around us talks about, you know, waiting for a vaccine for COVID-19 or waiting for the election to be done in the United States as if either one of those things could possibly solve all the problems. And that is the hope for which we ought to endure or because of which we ought to endure what we are facing now. But the scriptures say to us that really the hope through which we ought to endure, or by which we ought to endure, the hope by which we ought to endure whatever is going on in this world, including COVID-19 and elections in crazy seemingly places, We endure those things because of the hope of Jesus Christ. The hope of the gospel. This, brothers and sisters, is what can get us through COVID fatigue. This is what can get us through months of limited freedoms. And even if we had to, like other Christians in other parts of the world, we could get through years and lifetimes of struggle because of the hope that we have in Jesus. Brothers and sisters, these are very difficult times. More difficult for some of us than for others. That's okay. But we have, just like the Thessalonians, we have before us a great opportunity. We have a great opportunity in front of us to work out of our faith. And to labor and toil in spite of persecution because of the love that we have been given in Christ Jesus. And to endure because of the hope we have. Well, what does that look like? What does it look like to work and labor and, and to endure in this situation? Well, <clears throat> for one thing, it means... Um, at least until and unless the government asks us to do things that are explicitly against our God and our faith, until and unless that were to happen, part of what it means to endure is to obey the laws that the government has for us. The regulations, the recommendations, to continue to wear masks, continue to uh, do the sanitizing that we're supposed to do, to continue to limit our attendance at church, to continue to do our best to support and love our neighbors by keeping them safe. Not because we're afraid of COVID-19, but because we love and we endure for the hope of the gospel. What else does it look like? It looks like thinking creatively and doing creatively to help our neighbor and our friends and our enemies too. What does that look like? Well, remember early on, people were walking around and and drawing encouraging chalk messages on the the streets of Athens and on the sidewalks and stuff. Uh, You know, that can still happen. You know, maybe it's time that somebody go around and draw chalk messages saying, hang in there, we can do it, 
we can, we can make it, right? God loves you, right? Maybe it means somehow communicating through your internet, ca- making close connections with people through the computer. That is something that we couldn't do even 20 years ago. Connecting with family members or people that you haven't been able to see, reach out to them. I know that some people in this room, they have daily correspondence with various people in their family and so on. That's wonderful. I don't do that. Maybe I should. Might be good. <clears throat> right? It, it, means, um, it means figuring out ways that we can serve. Maybe, you know, the youth, I don't know whether they're going to do sort of uh, what they used to call rake and runs this year. Uh, I don't know whether they'll be able to organize that where they go around and help various elderly folks who may not be able to uh, rake their own leaves and so on and so forth. I don't know whether our youth will do that, but maybe some of you, some of me, (laughs) some me, Uh, Maybe I. (laughs) Maybe we can do something like that to love our neighbors. You don't have to be close to them physically in order to rake their leaves, right? There are things we can do. You know, even things like, and this is one that I particularly enjoy, um, buying food from local restaurants for takeout because they're having a tough time surviving. That's always a, I can feel good about that now. I get my, I get my bacon poutine and I'm supporting local, <coughs> local business. It's great. Right, honey? <coughs> Amen. Amen, yeah. <laughs> right? There are things we can do, brothers and sisters, to work and labor and endure. Let us. Let us be like the Thessalonians. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so very much for this encouraging word from the Thessalonians and from Paul and Silas and Timothy. Lord God, I, I thank you for all of our Athenians here. Lord, may we, may we work by faith. May we labor by love. And may we endure by hope in you, Lord Jesus. Guide us, we pray, that we may serve you and serve our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.